All right, you guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about custom fields and Facebook form mapping. So custom fields, you guys, are, are can be used in a couple different ways. I mean, ultimately, custom fields in your forms are essentially uh, how you auto-populate information and actually push that information into your contact forms. So again, you'll notice um, under custom fields, you're gonna see some different types of custom fields in here. If this is blank, it's most likely because you haven't created a form yet, okay? So just really quick, when we go over to um, sites and then you're gonna see forms and you can click on builder, okay? Now, form builder, you guys, works just like any form builder would. Um, what's great is you can, you can customize this in, in 100 different ways and ultimately gain whatever data that you need. Um, these forms can be integrated on your calendars. They can be placed on websites. So again, if, <clears throat> if you need like client information where they're collecting leads on their website and pulling that information into go high level and firing off automations, essentially these are where you would build the forms and then you would integrate them onto the website. So pretty simple. What you're gonna see over here is some different fields, right? Full name, last name, email. And literally all you do, you guys, is drag this over, right? Drag over phone. If you need the phone number, it's gonna populate that in. Now, types of advertising, you guys, this is what's called a custom field, okay? So with custom fields, just note that if you go to your custom fields tab inside your menu, like you can create them manually in there, but also if you create them while you're building your forms, it automatically puts them in your custom fields. So let me show you what I mean. So I just created this um, types of advertising custom form that allows a drop down menu of, you know, what type of advertising do you use? But let me just show you. When you go to add a custom field, <clears throat> you can do it single line, multi-line, text box list, a number, phone, monetary, drop down, drop down multiple, radio select, checkbox, date picker. Okay, file upload, signature. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the forms. Um, if you just need a single line of text with a client typing it out, that's what that's for. If you need multi-line, um, if you need a text box list, you can do that as well. Right? And if you click on these two, you guys, it's gonna show you a preview of what that looks like. So give you an idea of you know, what different things you, you want to use as you're going through this. You've got amounts, you've got drop down, drop down multiple, radio select. So again, if you need like check boxes, you've also got that, you've got date picker, et cetera. So let's say that um, I wanted to ask a multiple choice question Basically, we would name this, so um, what, is, what is your marketing budget, right? So probably wouldn't be that direct on a form, but either way, under group, right? You've got contact, a, a general info and additional info. So contact, you guys, is everything that pulls into the contact card for the contact. So for instance, name, email, phone number, if you need something updated to a contact, like that's what you're gonna utilize. Now, general info and additional info <clears throat> can be a lot of different things. So for instance, if you're looking at their marketing budget, like that could be placed under general info. And I'm gonna show you guys inside the contact card where you'll find these different placements because this is just determining where you want the form information input into the contact card. Okay, so what is your marketing budget? I would call that general info, right? You could have zero to 1,000. You can add an option, 1,000 to 5,000. You could add another option, 5,000 to 10,000, right? So. However you need these forms um, to look and feel, you can do that. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and save that. And you'll see that that just populated right here on the right hand side as a custom field. So there's two areas here. You've got standard, which are just your, your basic fields. You've got custom fields. 
And over time, you're gonna build a lot of these out, essentially, because you're gonna have different types of forms that you need, um, different information that you wanna collect on clients. Same thing with your uh, sub accounts for uh, your uh, clients, you know? So there's a lot of different types of businesses and there's reasons why you need custom fields, but basically you can now add that custom field to the form. And now what you would do is you can save and integrate. So first of all, just go ahead and save the form. By the way, up here under styles, you can change the whole styling format of the form. You can name it. So if this was uh, Courtney's calendar form, right? Uh, so you can name it, whatever you need to name it. Um, on submit, you can also send them to a URL, you could send them a message. So ultimately you can set that stuff up here. You can Facebook pixel this, which is great. Um, and then also mark what the pixel event is. So you can do all of that right in here inside the form, right? And you can also add sticky contact. So if a person has filled out this form before, it'll auto fill their information. All right, and then save. And then when you integrate, here's the biggest thing. There's a lot of cool ways that you can integrate these forms. So again, you can do it as a sticky sidebar, a polite side uh, slide in, so that form's just gonna kind of slide in, and then a pop-up or inline, which is basically embedded directly onto a page. Now, trigger type, you can do it by a percentage of scroll on the page. You can show it after 10 seconds on the site. Uh, you can always show, you can activate on the second visit if for some reason you don't want to activate it on the first. Um, you can basically leave it always activated. You can deactivate after showing the form, say, three times and have it disappear. You can also deactivate it once the lead is collected. So if someone fills it out and you don't need that form to populate again, you can do that. So right here, copy embed code. That is, you really don't need to copy the embed code if you're doing everything inside of Go High Level. However, if you're working on a WordPress site that's off of the site, that's where you would need the embed code because you can just go drop that into an HTML form and essentially embed that form wherever you need it to go, right? And then you've got the link to the form. So you've got both options there. You can do a lot with it. And essentially if I copy that link and let's say we come on over here, you're gonna see what that form looks like. Now again, you can just, go into your, your funnel builder, you can build a really simple landing page, you could add photos to it, um, and just basically make this nicer, right? So <clears throat> you're gonna see here these custom values, what's your marketing budget, right? It's gonna allow people to select these. Now, note that what they select here is getting pulled into their contact card, okay? So for instance, if I put in Joshua, uh, Okay, last name, email, let's do, and then website URL, let's just say Alpha Bay. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go submit this form, right? So you'll notice here that I didn't set up the form to go to the next page or to send a thank you message, so it just kind of died right there. So just remember when you're setting up your forms to always make sure that it's either sending a thank you, we got your information or sending them to a thank you page. Uh, I'm a huge fan of thank you pages. You guys, you can use your thank you pages to, to build Facebook groups. You can use it to push clients kind of wherever you need. You can use it to push them to a video lander that explains what's happening on next steps. So just keep that in mind when setting these things up. But ultimately, I just filled in that form. So if we come over to contacts, <clears throat> you're gonna see now that I became a contact in the system, okay? Now, the other thing that you'll notice is these tabs down here, general info, right? Business name, street address, all that stuff. What is your marketing budget, okay? So because we set that to general info, that populated this custom value in here. Right, and then you've got additional info because we set that 
custom value to go there. So wherever you decide in setting up those, those steps, that's where inside of your contact forms or inside of your contact area, you're going to see that. This is also where you can add tags, right? You can add individual users to a specific campaign workflow, which we're gonna be talking about. Um, okay, so, and you guys, you can, you can mark these D&D, do not disturb, and you can do it by channel. So email, text, phone, voice, you can mark them all. If this is turned on, your text messages and emails will not go out, okay? This, this happens when somebody replies stop and you mark that DND, &D, do not disturb, right? Um, but ultimately, what I wanted to share is inside of custom fields now, you guys, what you'll notice is down here, what's your marketing budget and types of advertising, okay? It automatically created those because I created it in forms. So just know that you can either create them in, in here or you can create them while you're creating your forms, okay? Once you've built a, a Facebook form, right, for advertising, and, and we're gonna show that in one of the next videos, basically once you do that, you can, you can map those fields and it's, it's part of kind of the custom, custom values. That's why we're having that conversation with this. But if you go into your settings and come into integrations, basically what you wanna do is connect your Facebook account, okay? So once you do that, there's these two tabs up here, Facebook form field and TikTok form field mapping, okay? Now, let me show you what that's gonna look like as we integrate these forms. All right, so let's talk about Facebook form field mapping. So under your settings, you guys, if you go to integrations, essentially you just need to, first of all, make sure your Facebook ad account is connected to your account. Um, if you don't have a Facebook ad account yet, you're gonna go to the section in the course that shows you the walkthrough on how to set up a Facebook ad account, okay? Um, once it's connected, because you integrate it directly inside your integrations, and then there's also a section in this course that shows you how to set up a lead form ad, okay? Once a lead form ad is set up, you're gonna see those lead form ads in here. If you don't see them, it's because you haven't integrated your uh, Facebook yet, okay? So, but once, once you've built an ad in Facebook, and you know that you want all of that information when you're collecting it and running that ad to pull into go high level so you can automate all the back end, your SMS messages, your emails, all that stuff. That's, what you're, that's where you're gonna do your Facebook form field mapping. Same thing with TikTok, you have the availability to do both. So you're gonna find those forms in here and essentially Whatever you set up on that form on Facebook, let's say you're requesting name, email, phone number, website, all that stuff. When you click on map fields, all you need to do is just select those fields in here. So just making sure these match full name, email, phone number, website, and you click on save, okay? Once you've done that, now the form is integrated into Go High Level. So any lead that comes through that Facebook form is going to be automatically pushed into your go high level account. And what you can do with that is you can automatically add it to your opportunities board. You can send it through different pipelines. You can send off SMS text messages. So um, that's how you integrate the Facebook forms, you guys, and do your custom values. So that's it for this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.